Motion tweens have significantly changed in Flash CS4, and these changes are significantly for the better, as you'll uh, see in just a moment. You can still use the older style motion tween, that is the style of motion tween that was in Flash before version CS4, and now that's called a classic tween, not a motion tween. To create the shape tween, in Flash, as well as to create a classic motion tween in Flash, you need to define a start keyframe and an end keyframe. That's no longer the case with the motion tween, the new motion tween in CS4. So to see how we get started creating a motion tween, right, I'm going to open a new Flash file, Action Script 3, and then I will, uh, let's just draw a raw shape. Okay, so I have a, and let me beef the stroke up. I have a rectangle. I'll beef the stroke up just so we can see it a bit more clearly. So we have a raw shape. Now, as I said earlier in this lesson, motion tweens are not applied to shapes, right? Shape tweens are applied to shapes, not motion tweens. Um, but I'm going to try to apply a motion tween to the shape anyway. So I'm going to right click on the shape and select create motion tween. Now, Flash is saying the selected item can't be tweened. It has to be converted to a symbol. Do you, do you want to, us to do this for you? Automatically, and I can tell Flash if I want to. Don't show this again. Just always do it. Um, but I'll say OK. And you'll see a few things happen. Right? First of all, we now have selected on our stage an instance of symbol 1, not a raw shape. If I go into my library, symbol 1 has been created and inserted into the library for me. And it includes that raw shape that I selected. Also, you'll see that a 30 frame span has been inserted on the timeline for me. Now, if I scrub the span, nothing happens quite yet, right? But Flash automatically inserted all these frames. So even though I only had a single keyframe and I had a raw shape selected on that keyframe, right, I right clicked, selected Create Motion Tween, and it all worked instantly and automatically. So what I can now do is move my playhead anywhere. So let's say frame 20. And I'll say, I need the selection tool enabled. So I'll select the selection tool. And I'll say, oh, you know, this one, this square should really be down at the lower right here. Okay. And so now, Flash has inserted the tween for me. I did not need to insert a keyframe. Uh, Flash just handled that for me. I could uh, apply a rotation. Uh, and again, Flash has done this for me, right? So that works. And I can go anywhere, right? I could go out to frame. Having inserted that new state definition in frame 20, I can go to frame 10 and say, you know what? I don't want that, uh, that symbol instance there now. I want it up here now, right? So Flash will adjust the tween I'm working with automatically. You may perhaps recall this concept of a motion guide in, uh, in Flash prior to version CS4. And that is when you were working with motion tweens, and uh, let's say you wanted the motion tween to follow an orbit, right, a circular path rather than a straight path. The way you had to do that was by uh, drawing the path, uh, a, create, making that path into a motion guide layer and then attaching your content to that motion guide layer. Uh, and it was not only convoluted but often messy process. In CS4, all we have to do, right, you see all these little dots that exist on this motion path uh, define all the frames, right, that are in between. So we have here at frame 1 and here at frame 10, these are each of the states uh, at all of the frames that are on the uh, part of the motion tween. So I can now modify the shape of this motion path right, with the selection tool. And now it's following a curved path instead of a purely straight path. If I want to, let's say, pick up and move this entire animation, right, I can just do that. I just click once to select the path and then drag the motion path, and my entire animation has moved along with it. I can select the motion path and apply and use the free transform tool and shrink the entire animation. Right? And now the entire animation covers a, a different, uh, a much a shrunken uh, path. Right, The same path, but 
but shrunken down. So we now have control of the motion path, which is created implicitly for us, right? As soon as we do something in our motion tween, uh, we'll have our motion path created, and we can work with that motion path as though it were any other content on our stage, right? So I'll select it again, enlarge it. I could rotate to try, right? So, and now we have a lot of control over our uh, motion tween here on the stage, but Flash CS4 also comes with this brand new panel, and it's called the Motion Editor. In order to work with the Motion Editor, you need to have a motion tween, which we conveniently do here. So I've selected the motion tween. I'll now view the Motion Editor, and let me collapse um, my properties. I can actually make it even a little smaller and uh, enlarge my timeline and enlarge the, mo the motion editor view. And you'll see it's grouped here into basic motion, transformation, color effect, filter, and eases. Okay, so we don't have any, currently we don't have any color effect or filter uh, transformations going on as part of this tween. Um, but let's look at basic motion. Basic motion has an X, a Y, and a Z rotation currently, right? Because that's all we are transforming. For each of the properties that we see listed, Right? We see these uh, spline curves that define the change in that property over time, where time is defined by these frames, right? That's frame one, this is frame two, this is frame three. You can see the content updating on the stage as we uh, scrub the playhead through the motion editor rather than the timeline. Now we can modify these spline curves uh, just as other vectors in Flash, right? I can, um, I can move the whole thing up. I can uh, hold down Command and insert a new point, and then modify that point, and then again hit Command on the next frame and bring it back down. Right, and then I can hold down Alt or Option. Right, so in this way, Flash is not only improved. Uh, the workflow of working with motion tweens gotten completely rid of the need for motion guides um, has given us vastly more control over the tween on our stage but it's also given us this brand new panel the motion editor where we have really detailed uh, control over over the uh, the motions that are, are that are being generated by our motion tween now I'm going to return back to the timeline and I'm going to show you um, that the uh, and I want to show you that um, just if, and I want to throw a few more properties on this motion tween just so that we um, can just see And before we move on to the next, uh, and before we move on to the next feature of motion tweens, I just want to add a few more properties to this motion tween. So what I will do first is uh, select the 3D rotation tool. I'll click on uh, the instance of symbol one, and I'm going to start rotating it. Okay, and uh, I'll also add some filters. So I have to bring back my properties, and under filters, I will add a uh, drop shadow. Right? Beef up the percentage. Doesn't I mean these num specific numbers do not matter. Increase. Uh, there we go, and increase the distance so it's a bit further away. And, Great. And now I want to add a blur. And then I'll make it a bit stronger. Great. Okay. So now, right, I can scrub my timeline. And uh, here I want to take uh, the symbol instance and change its 3D. But now I also want to use the 3D translation tool. And I'm going to click in the center to adjust the Z position, the position on the, along the Z index. Uh, now I can adjust the position along the Y and also along the X. 